Hello colleagues, uh, let's talk today about uh, tracking of forklifts in a warehouse. This is a very, very typical task and uh, we have many approached many times with this. So let's uh, discuss in details how it could be done or how it is done. Now, first of all, what's the task? Uh, in this particular case, a warehouse is around 200 meters by 20 meters. And the task is to uh, precisely track uh, 10 forklifts in real time uh, in order to analyze uh, their driving behavior, spending time, and also locate the tasks to the drivers based on their current location. How the system is arranged? Um, each forklift uh, has a mobile beacon, mobile super beacon installed inside and being tracked. Uh, there are 14 stationary beacons installed on the walls around 4 meters above the ground. Um, these uh, 14 uh, super beacons, this kind of, um, are arranged in inverse architecture. Please check on our website uh, about the terminology uh, into 11 submaps. So this is a submap which is covering this area. And you can see this gray uh, service zone for this submap. And there's another submap covering the same area. Uh, what is it for? It's basically for resiliency. So it means that the system will pick up automatically the best signal from uh, both submaps. And if the signal, and let's say measured location is not matching, then it will be using the performance, or let's say the location from the best performing submap. It's also a resilience against the abstraction because if any of these uh, beacons are abstracted, so the mobile beacon cannot see or hear the signal from any of these beacons, then it cannot be tracked. But at the same time, it may be seen uh, by the beacons from the opposite direction. It basically increases the resiliency of your uh, network. Uh, so there are uh, several overlapping submaps. So this one, and two overlapping submaps, three and four, etc. In this area, there is no overlapping submap simply because the area was not narrow and wasn't possible to install uh, the beacons on this side uh, because of the shape of the warehouse in this area. Um, there's a interesting for this case is that the distance between, for example, this uh, station beacon and this uh, farther end of the service zone is uh, significantly more than 30 meters that we recommend, it's up to 40 meters. And in this case, it could be even more. Uh, why? Uh, no, basically, when we did the network planning, there were more beacons originally, but during the rollout, uh, the integrator uh, made some mistakes and we had to adjust the network planning on the, on the fly. And effectively, we rearranged the beacons so that low frequency beacons station beacons, like in this case, 19 kilohertz and uh, 25 kilohertz beacons, they, uh, they can tolerate their larger distances, more than recommended 30 meters, in this case, up to 40 meters. And also we deployed uh, the forklifts using uh, Omni microphones, which are extending the range of uh, confident tracking even further. So this is the forklift. This is forklifts track. These are other forklifts and these are the tracks of the forklifts. And these are the station beacons. So which are facing down and basically placed in such way that they would uh, provide their the best coverage, the best ultrasonic coverage to the mobile beacons. The mobile beacons are placed on the forklift and uh, the Omni microphone is on top of the forklifts uh, roof so that the station beacons are which are high on the ceiling uh, or high on the wall next to the ceiling would be seeing or hearing uh, their mobile beacons uh, as, as uh, you know optimally as possible. Um, what data do you have? No, well, first of all you are getting the raw data about the location. Second, there is a real-time player, which is uh, uh, basically a special filter and special smoothing, uh, which allows to uh, occasional jumps or 
uh, missing location data to be tolerated and smoothened. Uh, additionally, all the data is recorded uh, in the large CSV file, which allows the post processing. And using the post processing, it's possible to uh, eliminate even further all the jumps and make the signal uh, absolutely smooth and absolutely uh, flawless. Uh, of course, when the jumps are not too long and where the sufficient data to interpolate the measurement. Um, it is used for uh, this uh, analysis of the data and uh, is basically the core what the system provides. Um, how did we deploy the system? We deployed the system um, remotely. So we did the network planning based on the inputs uh, from the customer. Uh, basically the floor plan, the task, uh, uh, all the needs. And uh, then we provided the data and the settings to each and every station at mobile beacon. And we shipped those beacons, you know, 5,000 miles away. Then the beacons were installed by their uh, customer's uh, integrator, uh, subcontractor, basically physically installed inside the building. And then we connected to the system remotely. We didn't fly there. there there's no need. This is why it's possible to deploy the system you know, all over the world. And we do this uh, remotely from our location to your location over the team viewer. So basically we have a full control over the system during the deployment. We can tune, we can adjust, we can you know, provide the settings, we can optimize the handovers between the service zones and uh, in the handover zone until the tracking is smooth, like in this case. And then we basically hand over the whole network to you and you can use it uh, as a complete map with uh, the data is being streamed to your location. So if your case is similar to this or you have something in mind, don't hesitate us. Go to our website www.myalminds.com uh, or send us an email to info at and we'll be happy to help in your case as well. Thank you very much.